Welcome back everyone. I'm Professor Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com and today we're looking at lesson 6.18 and continuing our look at how we can use enolates as nucleophiles. We looked at the aldol condensation in lesson 6.17 and in the aldol reaction you use the enolate to react with a ketone or aldehyde. And in the aldol reaction we saw how you can use an enolate nucleophile to do nucleophilic addition to a ketone or aldehyde. Well, when nucleophiles react with esters, they most commonly do the nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction, not the simple nucleophilic addition protonation that ketones and aldehydes do. This is what we call the type C reaction. And that's exactly what we're going to see when we use an enolate as the nucleophile to react with the ester. And this is going to be a reaction called the Claisen condensation. Let's just remind ourselves what esters tend to do in these nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions, or type C reactions. You first have the nucleophilic addition, and because you can generate a good leaving group from this OR group, it can leave as an alcohol, for example. Your second step is nucleophilic elimination, so the net result is that that nucleophile has replaced this leaving group. One thing I mentioned back when we learned about making enolates is that it's more difficult to make the enolate if we want to deprotonate the alpha position of an ester compared to making an enolate from an aldehyde or ketone. So we're going to use a stronger base here. We're going to use an alkoxide instead of a hydroxide. And the first step is going to be taking off one of these alpha protons using that strong base, drive the reaction forward to get the enolate in box A. Well that step was just meant to generate our nucleophile. We know what the nucleophile is going to do in this nucleophilic acyl substitution. It's simply going to do the nucleophilic addition step like we've seen for so many other reactions. And that will give us the species in box B, where it's this alpha carbon that's now attached to what had been the carbonyl carbon of the ester. So we've completed this first step in the general reaction scheme where we've added the nucleophile. Now like any other nucleophilic acyl substitution, the next step is to push your leaving group off. We'll lose the OR minus group. You see we've employed an RO minus group over here, so this OR minus group could go on to find another species to deprotonate. And what we're left with then is we've remade the carbonyl CO bond, and in place of the OR group that we had in the initial compound, we now have an attachment to the alpha carbon, which I've indicated here. And then we have the piece that I'm showing in red, that was the ester that was originally deprotonated up here to make the nucleophile. And what you'll see is the net result is that the OR leaving group got replaced with this whole big nucleophile. And that's really no different than what we saw down here, leaving group replaced by nucleophile. The only thing that makes it a little harder to visualize immediately is that this nucleophile is kind of large and complicated. It's the enolate. And this is an example of the Claisen condensation. You'll see that what you always get is some aldehyde or ketone group over here, and then one thing stays an ester because you deprotonated it and used it as the nucleophile. It did not actually get attacked and reacted at its carbonyl carbon itself. Now if you've recently watched our aldol condensation video, you know that when we talked about the aldol reaction, we then talked about an intramolecular aldol reaction to make cyclic compounds. Now for whatever reason, when someone does a Claisen condensation reaction intramolecularly between an ester and another ester that are attached by a chain, this is called the Dieckmann condensation. So if you see someone referring to the Dieckmann condensation, mechanistically it's very much the same as the Claisen condensation, where your first step is going to be to deprotonate the species to make the enolate shown in box A. And then, because this nucleophilic site and the site susceptible to nucleophilic attack are so close together, being held close together by that chain, we're actually going to do a nucleophilic attack intramolecularly like this. Now, especially as a beginner, if you're trying to figure out these cyclization reactions, it's pretty helpful to number the atoms that are involved. So number the atoms that connect and the atoms involved in the actual reaction. Here there are five of them that tells you your cyclic structure you make is going to be a five-membered ring. So you can just draw a pentagon right off. So I draw my pentagon. It doesn't really matter where you start numbering this thing, as long as you fill in the groups in the right spots. Like carbon number one has this ester group coming off. So in our 
intermediate species in box B will have to also draw that. And then you see carbon 5 is the only thing that has any other non-hydrogen substituents. It has the O, which has its minus charge pushed onto it as indicated by that reaction arrow there. And it still has its OR group, of course. Now the second step after nucleophilic addition to this carbon here is nucleophilic elimination from that carbon where you push the OR group off. And that gives us the species in box C as our final product. Now, another reaction that's essentially the same as the Claisen reaction involves using an enolate from a ketone as the nucleophile. Ketone or aldehyde will work. And then that nucleophile will attack the ester. And this reaction works effectively because you can take a weaker base like hydroxide that's not very good at deprotonating an ester to make the enolate. You can get the ketone or aldehyde deprotonated and have that attack. And the net result is going to be the substitution of that enolate for the OR group. So if we draw the piece that came from the ester here, it's phenyl group in this case, here's where that leaving group was attached. Well, that's gone now. And instead we have the alpha position of, in this case, acetone that we're using to attach to that site. And that's a way to sort of talk through this reaction or the other Claisen type reactions discussed here to quickly arrive at the product. You should have one alpha carbon between the two carbonyl sites and one half should be the nucleophile, and one should be what used to be the ester attached to the alpha carbon where its OR group used to be. And no matter what situation you're in where you have a base with carbonyls, remember that you're looking for the most acidic site to be most readily deprotonated. And it's that anion, that conjugate base that you generate that way, that will then serve as your nucleophile. So anytime you're faced with a case where you have the potential for different sites to be deprotonated. And here we didn't have that. We have a phenyl group, but even if this was an alkyl group, you look for the most acidic site, you deprotonate that, and use that as your nucleophile.